right, what if we told you that you have the chance to win a million bucks if you're a registered voter in a battleground state? Sounds great. Well, it's not that simple, far from it, and it may not even be legal. Tonight, a group of Republicans are warning Elon Musk that his million-dollar giveaway is a violation of federal law, which forbids payments in exchange for registering to vote. The billionaire, an avid Trump supporter, says he's giving a select few registered voters from key swing states a big payout if they sign his super PACs petition to support the First and Second Amendments of the Constitution. Musk hand-delivered the first check to a registered voter at a town hall event in Pennsylvania over the weekend. Joining us now is Republican Congresswoman from South Carolina, Nancy Mace. Congresswoman, great to have you back on the show. What do you make of, for having me. of this? Uh, we've got 11 former Republican officials who are now pushing for this DOJ investigation. Do you think what he's doing is on the up and up? Well, look, I mean, the, this tells you how high the stakes are right now, right? This is their October surprise to try to throw Trump and Elon Musk off the path, I guess, to victory. But um, I, you know, with regards to federal law, he's not paying people to vote. He's asking them to sign up for his petition. I would imagine growing a list of followers, email lists, et cetera. I don't know what federal law says about that, um, but I would imagine there are lots of groups that raise a lot of money to try to get people to sign up for email. Um, so I don't know that it's illegal. Obviously, if you're paying people to vote, very different thing. That's what they're accusing him of. But you just saw in your headline before on the screen, he's asking people to just sign a petition, right. likely to give their email to add them to his email list. Yeah, it, it, it's like he's dancing right up to the line, like sign my petition in support of the First and Second Amendments and I'll give you a million. I mean, yeah, I mean, but, we, what is, but, what's, but what's very illegal and the Supreme Court ruled on this was throwing you know, the presidential nominee off the ballot in states like Colorado, right? I mean, that happened and the Supreme Court said that was a bad thing and that wasn't constitutionally sound or done. That's not what we're talking about here. We got, we got a billionaire who's asking people to sign a petition I don't really see a whole lot wrong with that. All right. Uh, with the election less than two weeks away, Vice President Kamala Harris is planning to take her campaign to Texas on Friday, where she's going to talk about reproductive rights. You represent the only swing district in South Carolina, and you have said that abortion rights is one of the most important issues for your constituents. And we see, we see that polling out today shows it's the number one issue for voters who are casting ballots early, and they are almost by a two-to-one margin going for Harris. Are you concerned that Trump is losing, at least on early voting, on this one issue? <laughs> Well, traditionally, historically, Democrats do tend to vote earlier than Republicans. It's, their, their it's pretty, it's pretty even people. this time around. Yeah. Well, this time around, well, well, we've seen record numbers. We saw on one day yesterday, on the first day of early voting in South Carolina, numbers that were far higher than the old, whole Republican or Democrat primary earlier right. in June this year. Record numbers. And I saw in the line yesterday were, were more women than men. Women vote at a higher rate than men do. In my general election two years ago, 55% of the electorate were women. I've been screaming this from the rooftops for I don't know how many years now, that women's votes matter, that abortion is on the ballot, not just this election. It was two years ago. We lost seats we could have won. As Republicans, we haven't done a good job of messaging to women and telling them how we're going to protect them. This has been my M.O. long before I ever came to Congress. In fact, when the crazy Alabama IVF ruling came out, I was the first member of Congress in either party to file a resolution expressing the sentiment to protect IVF. When the Arizona ruling came out, that crazy abortion ruling, I, I was the first and probably only Republican that spoke out about that in Congress. I've been really vocal. I feel confident about my voice and my voice to women in my district, I am a swing district, but I'm worried about swing states and swing districts where Republicans have been silent on women's issues. Yeah, we see a yawning gender gap, Congresswoman. I mean, it, yeah. it, it is massive, the biggest one we've ever seen in modern politics. Yeah, and in fact, I was looking at some some video of my male opponent today who said rapists should be disciplined. Like, what what does that mean? No, rapists should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Disciplined? <laughs> Yeah, that's what he said. I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about it later tonight. But it's like, no, rapists, no, they get the, they get, they get prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. This isn't about disciplining a rapist. It's highly offensive. And so, my job as a woman, whether, whether you're an, a Republican or a Democrat, I'm going to call you out for it. And I've been doing that for years, which is why overwhelmingly I won this swing district two years ago, overwhelmingly with the support of female voters. Are you? Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.